So the common name is the tapeworm, of tapeworm. course. The kingdom is Animalia. The phylum is Platyhelminthes. The class is Cystoda. The order is Cyclopilidea, and the family is Tanidae, and the genus is Tania. The habitat of the tapeworm. So the tapeworm lives in almost all land, sea, and freshwater habitats where vertebrates live. Um, and most adult tapeworms live in the intestines of the final host, but a few species live in the body cavity. Uh, tapeworm larvae, which live in a host called the intermediate host before moving to the final host, live in various types of tissues, such as the liver, lung, muscle, body cavity, brain, and sometimes even the eye. Um, ecological importance. Um, tape worms get into the body when a person eats or drinks something that is affected with a worm or its eggs. Once inside the body, the tapeworm head attaches to the inner walls of the intestines. The tapeworm feeds off food that the host is digesting. So there are multiple adaptations for earthworms, such as their heads have suckers and stickers to grip to the gut wall. They are protected from the digestive um, digestion to be a thick enzyme-resistant cuticle. They use anaerobic respiration so they can survive without oxygen. Each tapeworm has a male and female sex organ so that it can re reprodu reproduce without a mate. They produce large numbers of eggs. This increases the chance that some will survive to find a new host. The most sophisticated adaption of a tapeworm is, is its life cycle. This helps the tapeworm to infect new hosts. Human tapeworms use a second host to transfer um, their to transfer to a new human host. Reproduce without a mate. They produce large numbers of eggs. This increases the chance that some will survive to find a new host. The most sophisticated adaption of a tapeworm is, is its life cycle. This helps the tapeworm to infect new hosts. Human tapeworms use a second host to transfer um, their to transfer to a new human host. When the eggs are beaten by the second host, the eggs attach to the larvae. We'll be dissecting a tapeworm, and since we do not have a tapeworm dissection guide, we will be using the earthworm dissection guide. And given our limitations, we will attempt to show you as much of a tapeworm as we can. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to identify the anterior and posterior ends. And the anterior end, the way you find it, is it's somewhat larger than the posterior. So, Cole, if you can show the anterior and posterior ends. This is the larger one, so it's the anterior. And this is the smaller one, so it's the posterior. If you look really, really closely, you can see bristles of some sort kind of sticking out that allow it to move. It's a somewhat smoother surface on the outside. It's not very thick, and that probably allows it to move through a human body very smoothly. The top layer of skin, just very ever so gently, so we can look inside of it more and really see the internal parts of it. And if we can probe these open, we'll put some pins down. In a typical earthworm, some of the important parts of the body would be a posterior end, which we diagnose an interior end. But the tapeworm isn't segmented, like we said, so it's difficult for us to find the different parts. But there would be a clitellum, um, a pharynx, esophagus, multiple hearts, um, the crop, a gizzard, and an intestine. And we think we may have found an intestine in the tapeworm right here, this tiny thing. And we're going to continue to cut down this, cold cut down on both ends, and we'll see if we can diagnose more parts. Cut very, just the top skin layer. An adult tapeworm consists of a knob-like head or scolex, equipped with hooks for attaching to the intestinal wall of the host, which may be a human, a neck region, and a series of flat rectangular body segments or proglottids generated by the neck. The chain of proglottids may reach a length of 15 or 20 feet, and terminal proglottids break off and are excreted in the feces of the host, but new ones are constantly formed at the interior end of the worm. As long as the scolex and neck are intact, the worm is alive and capable of growth. A rudimentary nervous system and excretory system run the length of the worm through the proglottids. However, there is no digestive tract. The worm absorbs the host's digested food through its cuticle or outer covering.